place is ridiculously beautiful. Apparently the population's only like 100 in this village and like 40 in another village across the way and the atoll's huge. I'm at the church now and it is beautiful here. It is quite the gorgeous sight. Right on the ocean. Kind of like a fringe reef. Uh, looks like there might be potential for surf at the pass, but this is great. I could wander around in these tidal pools for a while, which I might just end up doing. I'm a little worried about stonefish. I think, think there, I think there might be stonefish here, but I'm not sure. I'm walking through here barefoot. Might be worth it though, because this is oh so pleasant. And wow, look at this. Wow. <laughs> this is freaking ridiculous. Fortunately, they have these very pleasant, convenient blue benches for me to sit on because I'm tired, I'm very hot, and I need to sit down for a minute. Ahoy, Captain! Pleasant day for a stroll. <laughs> it's so nice here. Out back behind there is a pretty pleasant beach. Oh, isn't it, not, isn't yeah. it gorgeous? I mean, a little fringe reef. It's, uh, just what a spectacular day. I know. It's amazing, is it? Is the I population here like 100? Something like that. It's ridiculous. Maybe 300. Yeah, there's so many of these houses are empty. It's, yeah. There's nothing going on here. It's... And it's, it, you know, it's one of the special places in the world and yeah. it's being deserted. Yeah. Yeah. I can't uh, imagine a place I like know, this. I, I... So, so many people would just love this. Yeah. Yeah. How many, how, how many, how much despair is there in the world that could just be solved by moving here? Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, this is a land of plenty to some people. It really is. I can't believe people you, move you away. Put, you put somebody from Africa or India here. Mm-hmm. They're gonna thrive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's. They're gonna. I mean, it, it's better than their six square feet they got in whatever hell hole they live in, right? Mm -hmm. Jeez. You know, with so, so much that's going on and so people being oppressed by their governments all over the world and this mm -hmm. exists. And when I get home, I just forget about it, you know? I think it's so remote. It just, it, it, it leaves your mind. You don't really, but what yeah. is the reality? What is the reality of it? You know, it looks great. Exactly. You, you go out of your skull if you were here too long. Yeah, that's why having a catamaran would be so nice. To come hang out yeah, places like yeah. this. I mean, get here. They, these people, they had these voyaging canoes. They owned these islands. I mean, they didn't yeah. just stay on one island. They owned these islands. Yeah. And they knew where they were. Wow, the majority of these houses are all abandoned and they're pretty nice infrastructure as well, but people all, all left. They all moved to uh, the main islands and New Zealand and yeah, so lots of these houses are just uninhabited. It's crazy. All these are abandoned too.
to you guys joining with me this morning. I would like to say thank you very much for being with me in Pinan Island. So my name is Alex Maritap Willem and, and I used to stay in Pinan and I have a big family over here. The name William comes from a person called William Masters, came from England. <clears throat> and then he met a lady over here called uh, Hari Hata, we call it in Maori. And then they have a child named Lydia. And then Lydia met with an American trade who been here in Penan for long of years. And then one of this person on the boat fell in love with this lovely lady in Penan, which is my great, great, great grandmother. And then they have family here. They have two kids, one girl and one boy. So on the girl side, that's where my families come from. They have kids, one is Helen and the other one is Ford. And then Helen married to a local Penan guy which is called um, Tapu. And then Tapu had four kids. One is a daughter and three boys. So my grandfather, which is William, his name was William. They took the name of the, uh, the first William Masters and also the name for the grandfather, which is uh, William Ford and then that's where our genealogy is and then William had son called Maritapu and then it's my turn now to die. 1850 somewhere around 1816 uh, somewhere there they arrived in the Cook Islands so we are not really called a real penan we call it uh, in another way we call it the Safrut Salad it's a mixture of blood. That's how we call it in another way, it's a half caste. Half Cook Islanders, half English. The most, they have their own Penran language, I mean name. Only those who have been uh, in a branch or in a relationship with William Masters, and that's why some has got another William name again, because of the same pattern where William Masters' family grows around now. William Masters got um, three wives from Benin. First one is uh, Harihata, and the second one is Akayaro. Akakayaro, that's the second one. And the third one is Petrin. Because I was born in 1958, and then the Americans arrived Penan in 1940. So that time, it, that's the Second World War. And then the American stays over here. As I far heard about it, there was about a thousand troops that left, I mean, stay in Pena. And some had moved to Aitutaki at that time. But Pena is by his own self and rehabited over here. And then by the time of colonies, and then the English people started to come in. So that time in the Cook Islands, the Cook Islands was run by the New Zealand government. And then in the 60s, and then it was changed to become as a self-government and called as the Cook Island government now today. In the olden days, as I uh, heard it from the old people, they were saying the population of Opinion before the, uh, the religious arrived in Opinion, the population is about 2,000 people. Most had been gone. Gone where? Because in the Pacific Ocean or in where the Polynesian people are, they used to travel around. They never stayed together. So, and then the population that time was 2,000. And then when the churches arrived over here, there was a bit of complicated in those days. And then that's why the people was being slavery sent out to Peru to be slavery. It's a bit of bargain, we call it, between the religious and all people just to get money to build a church. But the real story is they want to take the people to French Polynesia, which is Tahiti, 
to get money over there and then to get the money back. But the people went the other way around. So about that time, and then it's dropped to 1,000. And then about later after, in the 40s, it goes about 800. And now the population is decreasing down, and then people is migrating to New Zealand and Australia. So far now, so far now, in one of the villages called Omoka, was 100. There is this one, and the other village was about 40. So the total amount is 140. In the 60s, 1960s, and then the people start to move slowly from Piran, move to Raro, and then straight to New Zealand. And then because of the moving around, and then that time people usually work for copra. That's the uh, main product and uh, main uh, finance for the families, for his families. And then while these things are happening, the people are still moving, 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 moving around today. And today, because there was nothing like that, no more copra uh, buying and then to be sold out, and the people is still sitting around. So they might make up their mind and then why not we go away from the island? Because over here, there was no job on the island. But if you are smart enough to build a job for you and to help your family, you will make it. You can do it. But if you want to go away, that means it's taking a lot of people. That means when the people moves around, and then we can't develop the island. If the people stay back, we can develop the island. There are some people, we call it the census people, who really understand how to develop the island. But because of these things, sometimes politics comes in, that's ruin up life of people. Eh? And then if you agree with some other people, you favor some and you lift some. So that's the difference between when these things happen in politics, people will say, oh, I don't want to stay here, I want to move away. It's not to move away of something. First, politics. Second, for their life. Better to move away so that you can't worry about these things. You earn your money and help your family. That's why everyone is moving to Australia and also to New Zealand. When the people moves and then the land, say for example, like we are, and then if I move, my family, I return back my my part of my piece of land to my family to look after. And then those who are willing to look after, to stay back. And then I, I will go away and then in my mind to think about to earn more and then to come back home. But if people move out and then they see different lifestyles and then it change quickly. It's really very hard for them to come back, very hard. There are some, they will come back. And then when they come back and see the same thing, automatically, they will return back quickly. They will. But there are people who will really like to stay on the island because they love the island very much in their life. And then neither things happening around, they don't worry much about it. They don't worry much about it. But they like to stay on the island and keep the island where it was. You know, some of the houses are empty and they give it to their relatives to look after their house. And then uh, they go away and then they come back. That's the only thing, they come back for the sake they want to come back home. But because of things changing, uh, interfering in people's life, and then they go back. They don't want that. They want to be as a free man person, free life. You do your own business, somebody do his own business, somebody do his own business, that's okay. You do what you want, but don't involve into some other people's uh, way of life living. That's what affected that person and took off. I've known it, I've known it. Before we have this uh, diesel engine generator, that's in the 80s. And then uh, after that, and then we move up in the solar in the 2000, in the 2000, 
will move up to the solar. So solar energy now today, and then we say it's really an improvement in our life. We just only in the past was 12 hours, and then about five years after, we moved up to 18 hours, and now today, 24-7. The initial generator is just only for backup. If there is a low, say, a cloudy days over here, rainy for three, four days, and then the uh, diesel generator will automatically run to pack up, recharge the battery. Uh, before, there was not enough water on the island. And then AIDS start to come in from uh, New Zealand AIDS, so many AIDS coming in. And then we start to get tanks for the whole family around the island. Eh? And then that support much. But when it's come to the season, the time of uh, drought, so you have to save your water, save your water. And then now today people are getting more water and more containers of water, but they are wasting a lot of water. In the past, it's okay, they say water. Now today, they waste a lot of water. The purpose of this is why we are always said it's a water. In the olden days, we have this poor flush toilet, we call it the hangover toilet. Okay? In the lagoon, they do that in the lagoon. And then people go on the side of the lagoon and then they do the poo there. And then later after, the health department came in. No, that's not safety. It's all the uh, ruin up environment for the life of the person. And then we move to another different one. We go for the drop toilet on land. So either we are doing this and then we have to use our water. Some, they have to use our water. Some, they just only drop. So always there was a disadvantage and advantage. So for the drop one, it was disadvantage. Flies will be going around the islands. So the health department decided, no, we have to go for a poor flush toilet. So all around the island today, we are now bringing our life just like a papa our life, English people. Eh? We have our toilet and our accommodation and our buildings and our houses so that people can stay and then they have to go to the toilet. They have these uh, new systems up to that, which is helps a lot. Yeah, in the olden days, all the shipping comes from Raro. There was a lot of shipping companies that pop in. And then the longest one is uh, Sukhan Boyd. Sukhan Boyd serviced the outer islands a lot. And then uh, later after Sukhan Boyd, and then uh, the tire shipping pop in. And there was a lot of lacking. And then the Kawai Popen, that's in 2006. When the Kawai Popen, they begin their trade here in the Islands. They come from Hawaii to Christmas Island and then down to the Cook Islands, servicing the Northern Group. And then sometimes they go to Raro and do the one in Ra. In those days, the Kawai had three trips in the year, beginning of the year, mid of the year, end of the year. Sometimes about three or five months there will be no shipping on the island. So we are lucky. The Kauai does his routine every uh, three months. They come over for a long journey and then go back and then come back again, go back and come back again, which is really good for helping us in some other ways shortage of fuel, so that the food supply, so other things. So Kawai is really a valuable boat for the Northern Group, especially for bringing the dry goods to us over here. And then for the Cook Islands, shipping, which is really, and now it's dropping now. So the policy for the government decided, oh, we will buy a boat and then to use it around the outer islands. When will be happen? I don't know. But it's still in the pipeline, turning around, turning around, turning around. I hope maybe a day will come, it will put into action. So far now, Kawai is still going on his business.
people over here in Penang plan, always plan. For example, like shipping. If Tapi Tayo shipping delayed for three months, and then people over here plan for three months goods. So until for the next voyage boat will be here. So they don't plan for three months, they plan for four months. Always give one extra month because we never know, maybe later after that four months, but we still got some. My role for the Kauai is I'm the agent for the Kauai now to die. Say if people need stuff and then they bring their orders to me and then I put it up in a proper way and send it up to Rao, I mean, sorry, to Hawaii. And then the people in Hawaii will keep the record. And then when the boat is now getting ready to come to the northern Cook Islands or to the Cook Islands water, and then all those things are ready there. They go back in all list and then they do the shopping. And then when they're done finish, and then they send the invoice back to me. And the invoice to be spread up to all the customers who have been ordered for this stuff. And then they start paying. Part payment. They part payment for it until the boat arrives. And then when they arrive, they take all their stuff for sure. That's my uh, job on that. And then some of the thing is the fuel, petrol we call it. And then uh, some of the cargoes from other people, which, which will be not being arrived. The customers will come to me and say, look, I haven't received this and I haven't received this. And then it's my job to go back and help my customers to go back to the Kauai store or to go back to the uh, Subagago, look, some of these people are missing their stuff. We have to reimburse the money. Or if she or he want to uh, get some of the things from the Kauai, and then we go for the money business. And then it's me, how much you want that, 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 and then to complete all the money. That's all he owes, the Kauai has to owe him. And then that's how I do it. And then just to help the people as the customers, as my customers, I have to help them. There was no stores over here for buying clothes over here. If you want to buy clothes, there are two ways. Some people, they'll go to Raro and buy all this um, block of clothes and bring it up over here and then they sell it. Some, they go to Raro and get the easiest way. It's already been done. They buy from Raro. But there was no store over here for closing over here. You go to the store and buy your closing. No. That's why when the kawaii start to pop in, and then that's something we put it up in, closing, to be brought up over here and sell it to the people. There are some people, they can't afford to buy a drum of petrol, for example. Some of the stores over here, they buy that one just to help the community, just to help the community. For the service of the Kauai coming here, that helps a lot, especially for the petrol, for the fuel over here. As you have seen, those fuel that had been arrived, it split around to every individual person. One drum is enough? If you are so greedy, no, take one. Somebody will need one. The other one will need one. Don't take two. That's how now. When the kawaii will move away, there will be a big of drop. So people rely on petrol because the motorbike is on petrol. The vehicles, are, the truck and the car is on uh, petrol. Only a few in diesel. And then uh, mostly the fuel being used on boat, outboard motors. That's where the life of the people is. They go out fishing every day. And then sometimes they save the fish for their relatives in, uh, in Raro. When the boat arrives, they send it over. But some of this, they do have business for selling their fish. They do have business. That's another income for them to come back in and to buy another extra drum of fuel. If there is a lot of small fish in the lagoon, and outside the lagoon, there is a lot of shark. 
If there is no fish in the lagoon and outside the reef, there is no plenty of sharks. The shark is only a few. Because I went to some of the islands. For example, take Manihiki, for example. Uh, if you go in the lagoon in Manihiki, there was no shark in the lagoon in Manihiki. The reason why is because it's the island has been closed, never been open. Like Penan, Penan had uh, big three passages over here. And then the shark can go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And then uh, when I went to Manihiki one time and then I went out uh, spearfishing outside the ocean with some of the local people there. Because I love going out in the sea all the days of my life. And I joined the bush. So when I joined the bush and then I found out there was no shark there. We dive about a hundred meters down. Some they use scuba diving. For me, I don't use scuba diving over there because I just go for free diving. And then you come up and then those guys are still underneath shooting fish. And then I get worried. While they're there, shark will come. But I never, never saw any shark there. But if you come to the reef, there are some sharks, they call it the reef sharks, brown and a black tip. Yeah, only a few there on the, on the reef. But in the lagoon, nothing. The question may be asked the same question. Why? Why no sharks there? They do have fish there. We do have fish here. And then why? That's a good question to ask. He is friendly when the time of friendly, but if some of the kids or some people drop uh, head fish inside the sea or guts inside the sea, and then at the time they swim around and eat those things, and then that can be in sometimes been affected the kids. But the kids over here are so smart enough. When those things happen, they don't get in the sea. They don't get in the sea. They get out. You go to a deeper place, there were some big sharks over there. And then you have to be careful. But to come closer to the reef, you see the same sharks going around, going around, going around, the same. But if you go a bit further than to a deep area, totally different. There are different ones there. It's the same like going out in the ocean. If you go out in the ocean, there are some small ones, but you go further out, for example, like trolling out, oh, there are huge big ones. <laughs> uh, my favorite fish is about one on a coral reef, they call, the, they call it the caught fish. They call it. And then outside was the, uh, we call it the black tuelli, small ones, and then tuna and uh, wahoo. Over here, everyone eat fish, but different type. And then the taste of the fish is totally different from the other fish to the other fish to the other fish to the other fish. And then you can rely which is the best fish to eat. So if you want to go to that fish, and then you go there, and then the people, some boat is there. They are doing the same, what you want. And then if you go to another place, and there are some people, they go for another different type of fish. They want that type of fish, always. Before, yes, people eat a lot of canned food. Now today, because the money costing, the corn of beef goes up higher and higher and higher. So, people are smart enough, okay? They, they thought, oh, to get about pin for a family, that's really cost a lot of money. So, they do it opposite the other way around. They buy tin, two cans of corned beef and bring it home, and then they put it up in the soup. Mix it up with breadfruit or purples or papayas or anything else, mix it in. That will cover it for the whole family. Especially Penrenes, they eat a lot of rice. That's their favorite food. If they have no rice on the island, rarely they are very hard to go back again to the local food and eat. They go back, but slowly, they eat it slowly, and then until they get used to it again, and then they continue on eating. I used to plant bananas. I got bananas at the back. I got papayas. And then and now today I try to plant the uh, uh, cabbages, 
lettuce, some of these new things, uh, varieties coming in and then plant it so I can mix it in some other type of food. The lettuce grow well over here. So far now I got the pineapple now growing. Wow, okay. I plant the pineapple because I learned a lot from some of the people in the south. They said in the northern world will be the pineapple will grow with the, uh, the warm weather. They love the sun. The pineapple love the sun. So I plant it. Now it's growing. If I'm a politician, politician person, what should I do for my country? What should I do for my people? I'm going to let them go away all the time? I should find a way. I'll sit down and think about it. Find a way. Talk to the people. Sharing with the people. Collect the information from them. That's very much important. And then for that, and then you've got something in your mind to make a plan. I think I'll do this for the benefit of my people. If you say, oh, that's okay, you go. That's not good. That's all you are trying to push them away. So to keep them, find a way. There is a way. Because in the Bible it says, if there is a will, there is a way. If there is a way, there is a will. So if you find a, a way of doing it, it will be back. And then the people will never leave the island, will stay back. But if you don't find a way, you feel sorry to see the island with uh, no person on it. Might as well sell the island to one of the person. <laughs> the, mostly the island council people are the one who are running the island. And then for the government side, the uh, minister is the one, I mean, MPs for the one working with the government, or the, uh, and then the local government that were here, working together. And then they have to work together. Work with your people and be with your people. That's a good answer for that. Work with your people, be with your people, and your people will support you. They are primary schools over here. Before we have uh, high school also here. And then when he goes to the high school, and then that's the time for you to prepare for go for a scholar. So you move to the college, go to Rara. Some they come back, some they don't come back. The reason why is if there is a place to work for, for the kids here, the kids who goes out for study, and then they got their qualification, they will return back because there was nothing for them to come back and continue on for their service, what they have tried to aim for. If nothing, they go away or they stay in Raro. In Raro because they, this is how he study. He want to become like this, but I'm like this. And then he stays there for that and work there. Yeah, the original name for Penan is Hararanga. Hararanga. Uh, to come to that, I don't really understand about why they call it Hararanga, but to come to a sense of a person to think carefully inside. There was a, a fruit over here called Ahara. I'll show you later when we finish and then I'll show you where that uh, fruit is. And then it's good to eat. They bear fruit and the fruit ripes. In the meaning of a sense of the word, Hara means, it's a, they call it pendanus tree, with the fruits on it. And then the people eat that fruit. That's their favorite food. And then, you know, the juice of that fruit, they scrape it, and then they boil it and scrape it. And then after that, they put it up in the sun. They become like a, a flower, we call it. And then it's really hard, they put it in the sun and dry it, and then they can cut it. And then you can eat that piece. When the Polynesian people start to travel, they go and find that fruit. Because to take it on the boat will last longer, on a canoe, yeah. they said. And then they can do it the same as I'm saying to you, or they can hang that fruit up and keep it there. And everyone can chew it. And then after that, they named the island as um, Tongaleva, but 
there was another one before, Mangalongalo. And then it's a lot of warriors who came over and then they land over there and then, then called that place Mangalongalo. The reason of this, one of the warriors came from uh, Tahiti, we call it, the name of the person is Mauta. And then when he came over, they want to get fresh water. That's the meaning of that Mangarongaro. So when they came ashore and then they found the pond, when they found the pond and then they taste the water, it's a bit not really fresh water. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit tasty of a bit salt. So that's why they call it Mangaro. That means by Mangaro. The water is not really pure water, but it mixed very close. You can drink it. You can drink it. That's why they call it Mangarongoro. It's supposed to be Vai Mangaro. It's supposed to be, but they call it Mangarongoro. And then the other name is Tongareva. Tongareva is one of the warriors over here who decided to go to the south. That means about the meaning of the word in Maori, Tonga. Tonga means south. Reva means sail. So that means this uh, warriors decided to go to the south. And then hey, before she goes and then he goes and then he name again back Tonga Reva, meaning about him leaving the island, going to the south. Did he come back? He never come back. He stays in the south. They found a place in the south and then it stays in the south. That's where the history stories goes on, right? And then after that, and then a boat came over, passing Penan, but it's wrecked and uh, hit on the reef, the Venus Reef. And then, but drifting, drifting, and then right up on the other island, the other village called the Tautua. And then the boat hit there. So there was a lady on the boat. When that lady popped on the island, helped by the local people, and then she named the island her name, Penrin. That's why today, Penrin had an uh, English name and also a local name. <laughs> if we call it uh, Ipukarea, I think we should call it Taku Ipukarea. So all of the islands. Like New Zealand, they call it uh, New Zealand, and then their Maori name is Aotearoa. So if we sit down and look carefully, they make the good uh, name of in the Maori. We call it the Kau, Kau Maitu, who says it's a title of a king. He's the highest among the others. And then they had a meeting and they, he's been up on the radio. They don't want to change the name Cook Island. We call it Kau Maitu in Maori. And so it's a title of a king, but he's above most of the kings. And then he, so that's what they do. If some people, if the local people comes over and put something to him and then to be decided, <coughs> like the names, they get together and have a meeting. All the alikis will be there, the kings will be together and then they talk about it. If people change, it will get better. If people never change, it will not get better. True. Thank you very much and for coming to interview me. I said, God bless you all for being to go around the Cook Islands and, and interview for what the Kauai businesses are doing around. Be with some of the Kauai's agents in Rakaanga, Manihi, Pukapuka and Nasa. I'm pretty sure they are very much appreciated to go up on the TV. I mean, on the camera and talk about it. They are going to talk it in their own language. Some, they can talk it in English. <laughs> Kia ora, Brian. If you are looking, it's me, Alex from Penan. So uh, it's good to say something very important about your shipping company coming to the island. I say thank you very much for helping my Pinan people and also for the Cook Island people in the north. It is very much appreciated for that. And then I heard about there will be something will be changing in your way. But be sensible of saying, think about something important. And if you find a way, there is a will. And if there is a will, there is a way. Thank you very much. 
and we'll catch you up again, my friend. Kia ora.